scanning for audio. Hello. Welcome to a Tin Dog Podcast. This time I'm going to be talking about, well, Space 1999 Volume 3, which is, of course, the fourth Space 1999 from Big Finish. The fourth, I hear you say. Yes, you have to cast your mind back. There was kind of a pilot introduction story, and then Volumes 1, 2, and 3, they've all been kind of the series. Does that make sense? Some of which are TV adaptations, some of which are brand new stories. They all feel very, very much Space 1999. So, synopsis time, I think. As the people of Moonbase Alpha continue their odyssey through space on their wandering moon, the long-term influences of their recent alien encounters start to impact upon their course. But first, an infinity of possibilities opens up to them with terrifying consequences. Mwah! There's no laughter. Okay. It's three stories. Uh, first one is The Skull, Mark Platt. Very safe pair of hands. The Godhead Interrogative by Nicholas Briggs. Yeah. And um, Dragon's Domain, and also by Nicholas Briggs. Series created by Jerry and Sylvia Anderson. Blah, 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 blah. No mention at all for the first time of Jamie. Um, I'm guessing he's busy. Right. Okay. So, Skull in the Sky, Mark Platt. There's a deluge upon the moon that will change everything forever. The Alphans must adopt to relationships. The, the Alphans much must adapt and relationships will change. Then above them, a portent of doom arrives. Again, as a synopsis goes, not the most in-depth. But basically, you can kind of picture the 1970s effects on screen. It's weird. It's not just the beautifully constructed soundscape that manages to transport you back to, well, you know, the exciting world of Space 1999, set in the distant future of 24 years ago. Yeah, let that sink in. Mark Platt's very good. This actual box set is, it feels the most like a Series 1 Space 1999 than even the others. And the others felt pretty damn close. Yes, you've got Dragon's Domain, which we'll deal with in a minute, but this this Skull in the Sky with... Well, the thing is, as with all of these things, if I talk too much, I end up giving something away, and I'm not here to do that. I'm not here to do the whole spoilers. Oh, this happens, and oh, you won't believe when this... Curb no. They're really tightly paced. That's one thing that this series, this big Finnish version, has over the TV version. Watching the TV version of Space 1999 is slow, is laborious. It takes a long time to do absolutely anything. That's not the case on audio, and it's definitely not the case with the big Finnish adaptations. The things that are occurring, the characters that are written out or may not be written out, are all important here. Much more important than they are on TV. But even on TV, you had people like, oh, this is the episode that's got Lovejoy in it. And you watch it and go, oh, he's not in it again. But he was very important to the running of the moon base. But it, I've never seen him before and you'll never see him again. That still kind of turns up a lot. But the regulars, the, the expanded regulars, are definitely milked. Used? Used to the height of what they're here for. Right, I'm rambling. I'm sorry. Look, first story's really good. It does have echoes of similar TV stories, but it is something of its own type. Now, the Godhead interrogative. Well, let's talk about the synopsis. Dash Kakano has been working on translating the alien script in Xantor's artefact. Xantor. She's beginning to make progress when 100 objects are detected advancing towards the moon. Dashka's skills will be tested to the limit by the force of the ancient civilization. The business with the things landing on the moon, all 100 of them, well, that is fun. That is, you know, dead useful. It's a very, very nice storyline. Afterwards in the extras, they all tend to be dwelling on 
what it could mean as a extension of something that's happening around now. But when you're listening to the episode, that's not how it feels. How it feels is... It feels like just a cracking good Space 1999 story with motivation, with characters being used in proper sciency ways, with characters being... Well, it's just very good. Nick Briggs. They always think of him as always the executive producer and he's a very good director and he gets the best out of the performers. People forget what an incredibly good writer he is as well. He can provide us with things that are just very, very reminiscent of the original text, but they take something and they move beyond that, beyond what's expected. And we've definitely got that in these two stories written by him. Dragon's Domain, the third story. Dr. Helena Russell relates a tale of hope, terror and tragedy. Isn't that all ter- All tales? The Alphans discover a potential means to enact the will of their referendum and return to Earth. But the Ultra Mission will be a journey into unimaginable horror. You see, you don't get writing like that in any other of the Big Finish releases. Oh, by the way, while I'm here, not important, but do you like my dark saber? Uh, yeah, sorry, just needed to show off. Don't know why I'm holding it, madam. So, everyone remembers Dragon's Domain. It's the one with the big wibbly thing and the people getting burnt and uh, all that business. But here we've got what could quite easily have been a massive storyline. You've got the Alphans finding a world that can provide them with the resources to build something magnificent to try and get them home. You've got the beginnings of relationships. You've got true emotional journeys and depths throughout this whole narrative. It's potentially award-winning stuff. I mean, it's genuinely, genuinely good. It captures you and it brings you on. It's worth the price of admission alone, as some people often say. The whole box set is very good. I would be disappointed if it didn't continue on for a lot more box sets. The whole will they try and return to Earth thing is really nice and was never truly mined uh, on TV. So yes, Space 1999 from Big Finish is greater than Space 1999 on TV. And you can take that to the bank. Look, I'm a huge fan. You know I'm a huge fan of Big Finish. But the Space 1999 just gives me that little flurry of excitement. The way that countermeasures used to do. Where you just go, oh, I'm glad that's out. I'm looking forward to that. So with that, I'll fade away. Let you hear the trailer, as always, and decide for yourself. But until next time, be seeing you. From Big Finish Productions, Space 1999, Dragon's Domain. Alpha, if you can hear me, this is crazy, but I think I've been caught in some sort of thunderstorm in space. It's dead ahead of us. Looks like... Like it's been sliced out of rock. That's definitely the thing that docked with Ultra. And the dragon's in there. Boy, Alan, let's not jump to any conclusions. What the hell are they? They don't look like missiles. Open fire. Computer's giving me a strange reading in local space. Can't put my finger on what it is. Kills, devours, we don't know why or how, but the people of that planet cut it out of the ground and ejected it into space to get rid of it. A word I translated on that map, identifying the line you crossed on your test flight in Ultra. What's the word? As near as I can translate it. Dragon. Big finish for the love of stories. That was the Tin Dog Podcast. Everything discussed is the intellectual property of others. No infringement is intended. For early access to reviews, follow the show on YouTube or Twitter, at Tin Dog Podcast. To contact the show, email tin-dog 
at hotmail.co.uk. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance. 